Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Carlo Chiriseri, and standing right next to me is my wife, uh, now Miss Chiriseri. Hallelujah! All right, so when you sit here today and then you are celebrating, it was not a celebration right through the way. It's been a long journey, eh? And then, firstly, before I start, by the time you stand on the pulpit and then you actually say, I do, and you can still be standing, it means you love that person very much. Amen. So let me take you back to, say, to, say why, to make you understand why I'm saying this. So I've been with my wife for a long time. Yes. If you had asked me a year ago, I would tell you I would never get married. I used to tell my wife, I said, if you are looking forward to have a wedding, you chose the wrong husband. So, one day, she did something very special to me, and then I said to her, you know what, I want to give you a wedding, I want to give you a dream. She said, are you serious? I said, yeah. And then I, she said, when? I said, give me three months. Choose any date after three months, and then we can have a wedding. So, we agreed. We told our very close family that we're going to get married. And then we came to Daddy on one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, Daddy, this is what we're planning. You know, Daddy looked at us and he said, um, not now. I'll tell you when. And then it so happened that in the next three weeks, we had a serious attack. We had a serious fight. And then we separated. So we went back to tell people that, stop preparing for the wedding. We are separated. <laughs> so people uh, actually said, what is the problem? And then we were telling them, ah, it's our own personal issues. We don't need any guidance. And that's it. So I took the money that we were budgeting for the wedding, and then I went on to buy property. I was staying alone. She was staying alone. We have two children, so I'll see my children once in a week, sometimes twice in a week, sometimes none in a week. Why? Because at the end of the day, we we're not staying together. So I learned a very important lesson during those two months that we were separated. You know, money cannot buy love. You can have everything in the world, but if you do not love your family and your children, you don't have joy. Family is the most important thing in life, right? So, prophets, you know my daddy, you know me and my daddy, he loves me so much. I always tell my wife, sometimes she says, wake up and pray. I say, you, you don't know who I am. My father is praying for me, I sleep. So, daddy came in, he came in with Mama Lungi, they set us down, they prayed for us, we came back together, and then within another two months, I was happy again. And then I said, remember, I wanted to give you a wedding. Now set a date after three months. I will go on to, to marry you. So we went and told people again, we are now getting married. And they didn't even know that we are back together again. So from this, you have to learn one thing. I want to encourage someone. Um, marriage... Is not easy. Eh? We are not the same people. I've got my own traits. She's got her own traits. I think the most important thing is just to pray. Nothing else can make a marriage stand than prayer. You can sit, you can talk, you can have counselors, but you need to pray. The moment you do not pray, it's just not going to work. So we told people that we are actually going to get married again. That's when the drama started now. You know, I always heard Prophet T.B. Joshua saying, you don't get elevated without a test. So the test started. So the first thing that happened was, when I'm working, we always work with laptops. So my wife has got a laptop she uses. I have a laptop that I, that I use. So the first test is, one of the laptops stopped working. So which means we had to change shifts now for the business to continue. When I'm sleeping, she's working. When I'm working, she's sleeping. So at the end of the day, we continued like that because we couldn't actually go on to say, let's buy a laptop and we're budgeting for, for a wedding. So we started to work like that. The devil said, oh, you're still trying. Then he attacked the car. So in everything that we do, we need to be traveling all over the place. So can you please tell us, like, what was the time span between both attacks? So the, the, the laptop stopped working. In less than two days, the car stopped working. 
So when the car stopped working, they actually went on to say the problem is your fuel pump. How much is the fuel pump? 6,800. So, okay, change it. When they changed the fuel pump, they came back and said, the fuel pump is working, now it's the alternator. I said, how much is the alternator? They said, 28,000. I said, my friend. And then, luckily, we found someone who fixed it at a reasonable price. So they said to us, when the alternator was not working, the battery was working alone. So the car strained the battery. You need a new battery, 3.8. So we bought a new battery. After all is said and done, they said, the car is still not moving. Eh? And then they said, now it's your actual, your, your, your water pump. How much is the water pump? 10.8. By the time we sat down and we calculated all the expenses for the car, we did a week. It was more than 30,000. You know, I look at my wife and I'm like, let's postpone this thing. But one thing that kept us going, we had been given a word. We were told, there's something that is going to happen. It's going to actually try to push you to postpone the wedding. Do not postpone it because if you postpone it, it's never going to happen. So there's something very important, I think, we will all agree and understand, especially in this ministry, that we need direction in life. You don't just start moving. Eh? The moment you do not have a word of where you are going to, you may give up before you reach your destination. So when I'm saying you are going to receive a word, I'm not saying you have to see prophet directly. Even when he's here and he's saying, take your breakthrough, do not give up, pray. Receive. That is a very big word. Now, I remember when I started to come to church in 2018, I wouldn't feel okay if I went home with a prophet touching my, my head. Nowadays, I'll be at the gate. I think most of you know me. I'll be at the gate. When I'm at the gate, when he says receive, I say me too. So at the end of the day, we all need a word that directs us to where we are going. That's the advantage that we have to be in a prophetic ministry at the end of the day. So now, the car is just charged more than 30,000 rand. One laptop is not working. Now the car is working. The second laptop stopped working. So now we don't have laptops, but we have a car. So I'm like, now how are we going to do this? So most of the time I do presentations. We actually uh, do support online. I started working on my phone. So you imagine you want to support an IT environment and you're using a cell phone. You want to do a presentation for a tender or a contract, you are using a cell phone. So sometimes I work from home, sometimes I go to work. The devil said, ah, you are still playing. Our driver's license goes missing. So I said to my wife, have you seen my driver's license? I said, your driver's license stays in the car. How do you mean have I seen your driver's license? We looked for it everywhere. We couldn't find it. So now there's no laptops. The car is working, but there's no driver's license to drive the car to go to, to work. So we said, I think it's time to pray now. This is not, it's not normal. So we started praying. We started fasting. Some of the things, if I explain to you, you may not understand them. You know, the devil is physical. The devil is not just a spirit. It's physical, like physical, physical. You can actually see that uh, this is no longer the demons. I think the devil on his own is in this house now. So we started praying about it, and then things calmed down a bit. Because I don't want to lie to you, Daddy was always with us in prayer. You know him. He's just smiling, and he's saying, ah, it is well. And you're looking at your situation, and you're like, this man. So I want you to know something. I've been in this church for more than six years now. I've learned something. If you expect prophet to say, hey, 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 here is your ID number. People say no, so that I give you a prophecy. You will miss it. That thing when you just meet him, and he's just smiling, even on the passage there, and then he says, how are you? You say, hi, daddy, how are you? And he says, it is well. That's more than enough. You don't need, hey, 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 your ID number is 96. What, what? I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying that this style of prophecy is not that way. So even when you come to him and you're crying, and then he just says, it is well, it is well, for real. So he was always there along the way, it is well, and he always says, congratulations.
this wedding has already been done in in heaven. So yeah, it calmed down. Yeah. Can we please hear a word from your wife? Good morning, ma'am. Can you please tell us your name and your testimony? Good, mo good morning. Emmanuel. Indeed, God is with us. My name is Karina Makwanandi. So this is my lovely husband, Carlo Chiriseri. Standing here, it's Mr. and Mrs. Chiriseri. Uh, my husband has said most of the things, but first, I think he missed the other part. I remember we used to have a lot of problems in our marriage, a lot of problems. As you say that, there was a certain time when you separated. When you separated, it was really, really bad. I remember I came at church alone. My husband had moved out already. I told our evangelist Petronella, and I told him about the problem that I was having. Actually, there was a rate in our house, a strange rate, a black and white rate. How it got in our house, we don't even know. Ma'am, can you please show us how the rat had looked like and for how long it had been in your home? Uh, we actually discovered the rat after my husband has moved out. After having a big fight, that's when I realized that there was a rat in the house. That rat, it was very funny because it would enter in the fridge and eat the meat. It would just chow some small, small nyana, then it leaves the meat like that. Then it will only operate between 12 midnight and 3 midnight. And you know, those uh, that time between 12 and 3, that's the time that we need to pray. But whenever it starts like cooperating in the house, I could just like, you know, feel prayerless. I would like, I would be shivering. I don't even know what was happening in the household. Until I came to church, I told Evangelist Petronella that there was something in the house. Then he said, okay, just buy the mentos. I remember I took some salt, some oil, a Raphael water. I mixed my, my concussion, you know, when I got home, I sprinkled all over. I remember I used this rough anointing oil and I rift this rough anointed salt. I make my own concussion. And when I go home, I sprinkled the, like the whole house. Then I declare that whatever that is like giving us trouble in this household, causing like problems in our marriage, it should be exposed. Then that very same night, midnight, it started to operate. Then I was like, no, the devil is a liar. I woke up midnight and I started praying and everything. Then following day, I started moving around the things because I was cleaning, only to realize that there is a dead rat behind our court. It is a very strange rat where we say there are no rats at all. So yeah, that's the rat. Hallelujah. Let us clap for Master Jesus. Ma'am, can you please tell us, was it just one rat or a lot? No, this was the only rat that was in the house. Then after we have killed the rat, that's when things started moving well for us. And ma'am, can you please tell us the, st the time span between the rat which was in your house until it died? Uh, I think it only spent something like a week because we only discovered we after this big fight. That's when we discovered when my husband had moved out already. I realized that every between 12 and 3, there is something that is busy in the household. Just moving around. You will not see it direct, but you can tell that there is something happening in this house. So that's when I bought some menkos, I anointed my household and everything. Then after that, I found a dead rat. Hallelujah. Let us clap for Jesus Christ. <laughs> so let us hear your word. So now that it was two weeks before the wedding, that's when the final test really started now. So we work with our clients and uh, the latest date they pay every time is going to be the third. But this time, they actually, no one paid. So all the service providers were half paid. The venue is saying, please give us a balance of our money. The lodge that we had booked, they want their money. The media people, they want their money. Everyone wants their money and all our clients did not pay. The wedding is on the 17th, now it's the 12th. We don't even have a single cent in the house. So we said, ah, this is not normal. So we called Sister Lungi or Mama Lungi, and then we said, this is what is happening. And then he said, ah, they are playing. These ones, let me call Daddy. Immediately, Prophet called us back. And then he said, why are you worried? I told you this wedding has already been done. I see what they are trying to do. Do you believe in the God of right here, right now? We said, yes, daddy. So there were two outstanding payments. And then he said, it's okay. Your payment has been released. The same night before we went to bed, one of our payments came through. Amen. Let us clap for Jesus Christ.
So now that the payment has come through, we are paying everyone. Now we are looking for the media guys. Remember, it's less than a week to the wedding. Now we are looking for the media guys. We want to give them their balance because we have given them 50%. The media guys disappeared. So we said, well, let's check these guys on Hello Peter and also on Facebook. And then we saw more than 10 people in January and February complaining about the company that they just took their money and then they disappeared. So we sat down and like, we have one week. How are we going to find media people? How are we going to make sure that they know exactly what we want? And also considering media is very expensive for a wedding, eh? very expensive. So we said, how are we going to even foot the bill right now? So we called Sister Longi, and Sister Longi said, ah, let me talk to Prophet. You know, I got the shock of my life. Prophet Isaga said, give them the church media for free. <laughs> the only thing that was expected of us was to tell them what we want. How many speakers do you want? How many cameras do you want? How many cameramen do you want? If you want any TVs or anything, we are actually going to give it to you for free. So media was now out of the way. We are four days to the wedding. Now I remember when we went to get our flowers, we got there on Thursday night at 5 p.m. And then we went in and then the lady said, we are closing, can you come in tomorrow? I said to her, we can't come in tomorrow because we want the flowers tomorrow. And then she said, you want flowers for the whole wedding tomorrow? We said, yes. She looked at me and said, didn't you guys know you're getting married? I said, my friend, you don't know what has been going on. So finally, we got the flowers. So we stayed opposite direction. The flowers were just there. And we didn't have any time to come and get the flowers here because we had to pick people from airports. Other people were coming by bus somewhere to go and pick them from, uh, from where they stay because everyone had to be in uh, Millerstroff in, in Kruger's Top, where we had booked there. So by that time, she said, you must be here by 5 p.m. If you're not here by 5 p.m., we are closed. You're not going to get your flowers on the day. So I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, so how are we going to balance all this? Because everyone is busy. And then I remember Sister Lungi saying, don't worry. Everything which is this side. Shekina as a church is going to support for you. Starting from how we're going to decorate, going to how we're going to be picking up flowers. I remember Sister Lung actually take a, took a leave on Friday before our wedding just to give us support. So at that point, I want to say thank you. Hallelujah, people of God. So the wedding finally came. The date came. You know, I was so emotional. I actually we were 48 kilometers from my house. I had to take one of my brothers to go home just to cry. And I said, after all this, it's happening. And then it happened. The wedding, actually, when we were on the date, we didn't have um, a program for the actual wedding. There was no, what are we going to do after? You know, I remember, I thank you. Thank all my friends. Thank you. We just told <laughs> They said, waste the program. I just said, Teko, make, make the program to flow. We have no program because we didn't have time. Because during the week of the wedding, I was working seven days. I actually finished working on Friday at four. So people were asking me about the program. I said, which program now? They said, you must tell us what to do after this. I said, Teko, my guy, make sure the program flows. And I don't want to lie to you. There was no glitches at all. Number two. Me and my wife had actually went on to sit for more than three weeks to actually sit down and try to put people on the correct tables for the venue. Because you know in families, there are some people who cannot sit together. On the day of the wedding, we never used any list. People just sat and it was so peaceful. So in this instance, I want you, you to learn something. Whenever God is involved, there is no confusion. Amen. So can you please share with us a word of advice? Okay, so the word of advice that I would like to, to share with people is, um, I remember when I came to Shekinah the first time in 2018, if you see my pictures, 
Ah, you laugh, eh? <laughs> Let us clap for Mark Jesus. Woo! They say that when a husband finds a wife, they find a good thing. Let us clap louder, people of God. So can you please share with us a word of advice? Uh, so my word of advice is that at the end of the day, God is real. I'm a true testimony of God being real. Uh, when I came to Shekinah, I was borrowed 20 rand to come to church. You know, when I look at my pictures and I look at my testimony, I think this is my fifth testimony. When I look at my testimony, sometimes I cry. God is real. In this church, God is there. I stand on the gate there. Let me, tell you, let me tell you one thing. I stand on the gate there every day. I welcome people to church. I want you to go home one day, sit down, look at the picture of when you came and your picture today. You will see God. So God is here. God is real. And I want to thank, I can't go without saying this. I want to thank Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries for the support, the love, the acceptance. Me, I'm very naughty. Ask my daddy. Um, so many things happen. So if you're coming to church, don't wait to be perfect. We come to church to a perfect God who actually makes us perfect. So there's no Amen. right time or moment to come to church. There's no right time or moment to be a Christian. Just come. God will work with you. Thank you. Amen. Ma'am, can you please tell us, like, right after the wedding, was there anything else that had happened? Oh, yeah. After the wedding, we've been uh, experiencing challenges as well. I think uh, because the devil sees that we have overcome already, he's still trying. I remember uh, just after the wedding, we wanted to take my mother-in-law back to Zimbabwe by the airport. It, all of a sudden, she just missed the flight from Norway, and there was no refund at all. Then we have to buy another ticket. Then I'm sure a day or after two again, we're supposed to go by the airport to trim, uh, some other people as well. When we were on our way home, we nearly had an accident because uh, there was a tire that, that just bumped from Norway. It came in front of us, but we thank God because uh, God has always preserved us. Then yesterday, there is a thing that always gives us trouble in the house. There is a strange a lizard. It's a white lizard with big eyes. So yesterday, whenever we are about to pray midnight, there is this spirit that always comes. You know, you just end up dozing. You sleep. You don't even know what's happening. You can't even pray. So yesterday, we've been killing these things for such a long time. But yesterday, it was worse because it came into our bedroom. We were busy preparing with my husband something else. Then all of a sudden, we just dozed exactly midnight. Then all of a sudden, I woke up. I was like, no, man, it's time to pray. When I woke up, the moment I opened my eyes, I saw this lizard just right there. We tried killing it. It was like bees running out the house. Then it went by our altar. It started moving by our prayer, you know, our prayer altar. After that, it went straight to the Bible. It was just moving all over the Bible. Then it tried to jump by the bed, but it, uh, it fell. Then it came into my, uh, into my uh, shoe. It just died just like that. So we thank God because we have killed it and we believe that our victory is ours. Amen. Ma'am, can you please confirm that that is the lizard you're talking about? Yes, that is a scary lizard. You know, if you were to see it, I, this is, it's not a normal lizard. It's not a normal lizard at all. It's not. Ma'am, can you please share with us a word of advice? Uh, firstly, I would like to encourage people to pray. You know me, some of the people that know me, especially some evangelists, they know what we've been through with my husband. It's been really hectic. We've been together for 11 years, but, you know, it, it wasn't easy at all. It wasn't easy, but I just want to thank some evangelists, Evangelist Petronella, Evangelist Respect, Mama Longi, Pastor Simpio, everyone that have always been there for us, you know, Prophet. You know, he's always been, like, encouraging me. No, don't give up, you know. Then I'll say, Daddy, do you even know what I'm going through? Daddy will be like, no, it is well. No one is going to touch you, you know. It was really hard. I remember a year or two years ago, Daddy declared to me, and then he said to me, you know what, just forgive your husband. I was like, Daddy, you don't even understand. He said, just let go. I said, okay. Then he said to me, Ashram today is a completely changed person. Ha! 
then I would look back, I would like, does daddy understand what I'm going through? But I kept on, I, I did hold on to that prophecy, you know. Then I would be like, no, daddy said it is done. Daddy said he's a completely changed person. And indeed, he is a completely changed person. Amen. Yeah. Let us clap for Jesus Christ. Then the Bible says that he who began a good thing in our lives will finish it. So I thank Amen. God because he began this 11 years ago. And here is today, this Jehovah Ebenezer is just too much. Amen. So, and ma'am, we thank you for your wonderful testimony. And we believe that God will indeed do great things in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Look what this family has gone through. You know, I keep telling every one of us, there is no way your belief cannot be contested. There is no way your love for Christ cannot be contested. There is no way your faith cannot be contested. But hold on to faith. Hold on to Christ. Hold on to him and it shall come to pass. The day of testimony, just like today. Just like today. The brother said, look at my past photo. I am always at the gate. Look at my past photo. I know why I'm at the gate. Hallelujah. Look at my past photo. I am at the gate. You know what that means? He said, look at your photo when you come to Shekinah. Many have forgotten. Many have forgotten. Even many that came, oh, man of God, bless me with a child. They are blessed with a child. They take the child away now, out of the kingdom of God. Only them know where they go. Tomorrow, if that child becomes something else, they run, oh, man of God, oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. Praise the Lord. Some were blessed with wealth. Some were blessed with a lot of things in the kingdom of God. And they left the kingdom to somewhere else. Praise the Lord. But today, my God have forgiven them and have remembered them in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, my God has forgiven you. Even you that confess today and tomorrow, change your confession. Confess yesterday and today, change your confession. We are all forgiven. In the name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People of God, it is well with you. It is well with your career. It is well with your future. It is well with your destiny. But I want you to once again, you listen to this testimony of this marriage. They went through things. They went through. They passed through tests. They were highly tested. You can imagine the family separated and went and built another family. Prayer was too mad. The girl said, I'm tired. The man said, I'm tired. Even the children, you know. But one thing I hold on to, Father, you never disappoint. And I want to tell you today, standing before Jehovah God and his Christ, you will never be disappointed. Can I get a mem to that? Amen. You will never dis be disappointed. Can I get a mem to that? Amen. Touch yourself, say, I will never be disappointed. I will never be disappointed. Imagine what they went through. Imagine what the brother went through. Imagine what the sister went through. And even at the time of the marriage, at the time of the wedding, there was no money. Those that are owing them refused to pay. Oh, prophet, help me. They couldn't even call me. That brother could not call me. It was mama who picked up the phone and said, oh, what do we do, man of God? What do we do? This family, this is what they are going to. I said, let me call them right now, right here. The God of right now, right here, will release the money. Hallelujah. The God of right here, right now, will release the money. And the wedding will be conducted. And that's what comes to pass. Look at the rat they find in their house. A black and white. You know what that means? And not only that. Not only that. They begin project. All manner of things into their life, into their home, projecting, projecting. But I want to tell you something today. Any man or woman, any living or dead that is projecting anything into your life, today I terminate them in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I destroy every demonic projection. So I want to hold on to this. I want you to hold on to this. Say, Lord, why you are still standing? I want everyone to stand up. I want everyone to stand up, please. Stand up. Don't sit down. Say, Lord, Lord. I stand in your name. I stand in, I stand in your word. I stand in your word. And I declare. I declare. Say, Lord, I stand in your name. Lord, I stand in your name. Lord, I stand in your word. Lord, I stand in your word. And I claim all that is mine. And I claim all that is mine. I destroy. I destroy. Every power. Every power. Every living. Every living. Every death. Every death. Every and every power. Every power. Every power. Every spirit, every spirit, projecting anything into my house, projecting anything into my house, into my business, into my business, into my finances, into my finances, into my marriage, into my marriage. Lord, I stand in your name and your word. Lord, I stand in your name and your word. I destroy them right now, right here. I destroy them right now, right here. And I claim all that is mine. And I claim all that is mine. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Say, Father. Father. I will never change my confession again. I will never change my confession again. I will never limit myself again. I will never limit myself again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say so right now, right here. Right now, right here. I am free. I am free. From every demonic entanglement. From every demonic entanglement. I am free. I am free. From every demonic operations. From every demonic operation. I am free. I am free. From every bonds of wickedness. From every bond of wickedness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. So right now, right here. Right now, right here. I claim freedom. I claim freedom. Every day. Every day. In every way. Every way. Of my life. Of my life. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hand together.